right, you can be seated. So, at the 8 o'clock service, I was preaching and teaching the Word of God, and they were sitting on me. So, y'all be ready to give me some backup, like, da da da, you know, just trying to support me while I'm, you know what I'm saying? Because the, 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 if the 8 o'clock crowd had a problem with it, I know the 10 o'clock people are going to be sitting quiet on me here today. All right, so today is a part four of our series on finances. Um, part, I think it's part four. I'm pretty sure it's part four. And today I want to talk about debt. I want to talk about God's warning about debt. See, I knew y'all weren't going to be excited. Go ahead, give me a shout up there on the da 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 you know, they, they didn't even say amen. Because you know why they didn't shout about it? Yeah, be ready. Just prepare. Be prepared. Because most of you are in debt. Amen. Most of you are in serious debt. And if there's anything that's going to mess up God's people, keep them from achieving and becoming everything God wants them to become financially, is debt. And um, I want to talk about this today. And I know this is uh, our series cornerstone verse is, Ecle is uh, Ecclesiastes 10:19, the latter part of verse 19, money answers, but money answers everything. Money can solve so many issues and challenges that we have in life. So today, matter of fact, tell your neighbor, this is, this is a Bible study. Because you ain't been to Bible study. Go ahead, tell them. So this is not... I'm going to look at various verses. So when I say Bible study, it means I'm going to be looking at a lot of different verses. I'm not just zooming in on one passage. I'm going to look at several passages and several points. I already know that this is going to present a challenge for some of y'all. So I'm telling you right off the bat, um, you're going to have a challenge with it. But it's okay. I'm going to give you the truth. And during the course of the 8 o'clock service, several people in the church felt convicted and they came up and cut up their credit cards and put them in my credit card thing. Now this is not just, this bottle is not just from this morning. This is from about 25 years of, of challenging people not to live by debt. And uh, so if you feel convicted, because I am going to talk about credit cards, See, they ain't say nothing. Give me a little amen right there. Uh, <laughs> so the average household in America in 2019 has credit card debt of at least $6,800. $6,800. And see how you figure next to that. See, some of y'all say, I felt it. Some of y'all said, that's all? Um, <laughs> The problem with credit card debt is the interest rate that it charges. It's not just that you're in debt, it's the, it's the rate of, of interest that you pay on it, 16% on average. And then we not only have a lot of consumer debt, I'm going to come back and talk about consumer debt in a moment, we also have a lot of student loan debt. Uh, the average household in America has student debt of $47,000. What's problematic with that is people are creating these huge debt things and graduating from school and can't get a job in what they went to school for in the first place. Right. <laughs> Y'all so slow with these things. Um, the number of people that are 60 days late on their car payment has spiked and is at an all-time high. The number of repossessions soared. If you got neighbors that are parking their cars at different places, you know they got the car, but they're not parking at home. That's a sign that the repo man is looking for you. I'm, I'm threatened to ask who's hiding their car 
around here. But I'm not, don't, don't raise your hand. Please don't raise your hand. The average car loan today is 60 months, five years. If, if you have to take five years to pay for a car, you cannot afford that car. Yeah, it's getting slow, it's lower and lower and lower. I know y'all don't want to hear this, but it's okay. I'm giving you truth. I hope you embrace it. What I'm trying to do is kill a debt demon. There's a debt demon over this community. We are, Prince George's County has the highest concentration of African American middle to upper class anywhere in the country. We have the highest percentage, but we also have high debt. We are in bondage to debt. People are stressed out, and that's not the way God wants you and I to live. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what Romans 12, 2 says. We cannot operate, should not operate the, the way the world operates. Some of you have adopted the mentality of don't use your money, use other people's money, OPM. And you think that's a biblical principle. It's not in the Bible. Amen. OPM is not in the money. It's not in the Bible. God doesn't want you to use other people's money. He wants you to, he wants you to use the money that God gives to you. Yes. Amen. You got to learn to live within the parameters of your income. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Okay. Now, let me start off because I'm talking about debt today and I'm trying to kill a debt demon, but I need to say this at the outset. I don't believe that all debt is wrong. I don't believe that this, you, you can't borrow for anything. So some, some uh, I don't want you to take my message today because I am pushing hard to tell you to stop using debt. But not all debt is bad. There's some things that you borrow for that's okay, uh, like a house. None of us have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting around just to go buy a house. If you do, that you can pay cash for a house, I need to see you after service. <laughs> I need to become your best friend. <laughs> so not all debt is, is bad. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Proverbs 22, 7. Uh, so while you're turning there, let me tell you this. The problem we have is what we borrow for. We borrow for things that we don't need to borrow for. Clothes jewelry, furniture, vehicles, travel, Christmas gifts. Christmas y'all go crazy because you want somebody to know that you love them. If they don't know that you love them by Christmas, <laughs> That's a problem that's deeper than what money can solve or debt can solve. Um, and yet, we, Christmas time, y'all go and charge and buy all this stuff that's taken you years to pay back. Some of y'all are still paying on Christmas gifts from five years ago. Amen. All right. Proverbs 22, 7. Are y'all there? It says, here's my point. Well, let me read it to you. Uh, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Y'all see that right there? The borrower is servant to the lender. When you borrow, you become a slave to the person from whom you borrowed. Amen. Some of y'all not serving the Lord, you serve in Macy's. Master charge, that's who's in charge of your life. Master charge, visa. Okay, y'all didn't get that. Okay, let me give it to you. The Hebrew words borrower and servant, server, um, is the same Hebrew word, but the difference is the position of the person. The borrower is uh, the, the word borrower and lender. I'm sorry, the borrower and lender is the same 
a Hebrew word, but what's the difference is one is over top of the other, the position. So the, 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 the lender is at the top, the borrower is subservient to the, borrower, to the lender. And, and the problem we have is we are, we're not working for the Lord, living for the Lord, serving the Lord, we're really serving who we owe, who we owe. You don't get up and go to work because you love your job, the passion about your work. You're going because you owe, you owe the people that you, you owe, you owe. You're a slave. You're a slave to that. You're a slave. And God wants us to recognize that that's not, that's not the way he wants us to live our lives. We are, we are uh, I am trying to break that demon of debt. So you say, well, Pastor, um, what if I need something? There's the word. That's the, we need to talk about what do you need. There's a difference between need yes. and want. Amen. Amen. And I'm saying to you, before you go out and charge it on the credit card, why don't you pray about it? Why don't you give God an opportunity to provide it? Why don't you wait? Why not be patient and let God work it out. Go on and preach, Pastor. Why don't you wait and give God an opportunity to supply the need for you rather than accumulating debt? The debt is what's killing our community and killing our families and killing our homes and killing our marriages is the amount of debt that we have. And y'all are, y'all, y'all are accumulating debt to impress people who still don't like you even after they see you. <laughs> when my wife and I first got married, early on, we accumulated $34,000 worth of debt. Y'all have heard me tell this story a hundred times, a thousand times. And when I found, about, found out about financial principles and financial freedom, I began to apply those principles in my life. And slowly but surely, over a two-year period of time, God enabled us to be able to get out of debt. Praise him. I've been, wait, wait, clap when I say this. I've been in debt, and I'm out of debt now, and I like being out of debt a whole lot better than being in debt. And so my challenge to you is I w I'm trying to help you stop using debt. I'm trying to help you get to a place where you don't depend upon debt and you don't keep accumulating debt. When you get in debt, especially on credit cards, you, most, of, most people make the determination on whether they can afford it by what the monthly payments are with no regard for the fact, no thought for the fact that you're going to be paying on that debt and it's high interest rates probably for the rest of your life. Long after you can't fit the suit that you bought. <laughs> Long after the shoes have gone out of style, you still paying on it. And actually, how many shoes do you need to have? Getting quiet, it's getting lower and lower. I knew it was gonna be tough. You can only wear one pair of shoes at a time. And I tell y'all, black, what? Black matches everything. Tension? Yes, sir. Where the tension at? Right here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right on this row right here? On this row, yes, sir. Right on this row? This row right here. Like one seat over? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why she's looking straight in the head, not looking at me? Yes, sir. It's all right. I feel the tension. It's okay. You're not going to be able to stand before God and say, Pastor Chingas didn't tell me. That's right. If you have... $10,000 in the bank in savings and a $10,000 debt on a credit card. Listen to this. The credit card, probably you're paying 16, 17, 18, 19%. You would do well to take the $10,000 out of the savings and pay off the credit card debt.
Look at your neighbor and say, you can't handle the truth. Did anybody come up here and cut up their credit card yet? I'm trying to, I'm not, I'm not preaching hard enough. Let me try a little bit harder to tell you that as long as that credit card is in your wallet, as long, matter of fact, it's not the credit card that's a problem. It's your inability to control your use of the credit card. That's a if you can't walk past a sale, you need to bring your credit card right on up here and cut it off and give it up. If you don't have the capacity, the maturity, the seasonedness, the discipline, if you don't have that, you need to break that spirit of that demon off of you at that. Why are you looking at me like that? You're looking at me hard and tough. And if eyes could kill, I'd be a dead man right now if I placed on your eyes. Right? If you can't do that, I'm trying to help you live better. Life is, I've been in debt, I'm out of debt. I like being out of debt so much better. Life is better. You know why? You know what I discovered? I can bless people when I'm out of debt. I can pay my bill. Listen, some of y'all got to wait when you get paid and the bill come in. When, when the bill come in, you got to wait and see what you, if you're going to have the money once you get paid. When my bills come in, I pay them as soon as they come in. I know they're not due for 30 days, 40 days. Y'all, some of y'all say, I got to hurt. Ho hopefully, I'm going to get the money by the time the money is due. I'm hoping it's going to come in. I'm gonna no, no, no. That, that's not how you're supposed to work. You're supposed to have a budget. You're supposed to know what income, what money you got coming in. And you're supposed to to pay your bills has it coming in. If you can't do that, feeling something over in this section for some reason. I'm drawn to this section over here like a like I got a like a, a, a gauge or something. Over here, over here. Talk to this section over here. Do, 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 up another one. Praise the Lord. There's two people up in this camp. Here come a brother up in the camp. Praise the Lord. I know there's some people that this message is for. I know it's tough. I know it's hard, but it's going to make your life better. It's going to turn things around. And whatever you do after you cut up the credit card, do not call the credit company up and say, I lost my credit card. Send me another You know the saints will say, what was I thinking? And they'll call Dr. Young, they'll call up, I can't find my credit card. Can you send me another one? No, I'm proud of you. Heaven smile upon you. this. You got to have one credit card. I didn't say this at the 8 o'clock crowd, and I should have said it. There's some things in this country you cannot do without a credit card. But you don't have to have the credit card charged up to the max. You just use it. I got, matter of fact, I got multiple credit cards in my wallet right now, but I'm disciplined. I got control. Ain't got no debt on any of them. Come on now, you got 10 credit cards. A lady came up at the 10 o'clock service. She was up there for the longest time. I said, why are you up there this long? She said, I had 10 credit cards, she said. <laughs> we had a lady in this church, had 100 credit cards, had a half a million dollars worth of debt on her credit cards. But when she got exposed to this teaching, she started paying off and God supernaturally helped her pay off all of that half a million dollars worth of debt. Yes. 
But she had to make some right choices. She made some right choices. She made some right decisions. She acted in the right way. And when she took those decisions and made those choices and cut up those and got rid of those credit cards and closed those accounts and did what she did, God enabled her to be able to get out of debt, a half a million dollars worth of debt. God will do the same thing for you. I should have, matter of fact, her, her story was so profound that one of the local news stations did a story on her. Yeah, I should have had her story, what I should have done. Here's point number two. Let me give you my second point. I'm almost, I got three points today. Number two is, here it is, write this down. Do not cosign. Y'all see here all that noise, that's experience from people who co-signed that shouldn't have co-signed. Don't co-sign. Do not co-sign. Proverbs 22, verses 26 and 27. Do not be one of those who shakes hands in a pledge, one of those who is surety for debts. If you have nothing with which to pay, why should he take away your bid from under you? Let me explain to you what I'm proud of you. God bless you. You're going to bless your, that's your baby. You, the baby, the baby. You, you're going to be blessed, sweetheart. You're going to have a wonderful life because your mother is breaking the spirit of debt off of her. Yeah, you're going to be all right. You're going to be great. All right. I'm proud of you. When people come to you and they want you to co-sign, let me tell you what they're really saying to you. This is what they're saying. I went to the bank. The people whose business of loaning money, this is their business, what they do every day. They evaluate people's income, budgets, expenses, history of how they spent money. And he said, I went to the bank. This is what the, and this is what the bank do. They, this, they, make, they loan money and make money off of loaning money. And they looked at my situation, my income, my history, and they have come to a conclusion that they don't think that I'm going to be able to pay this money back. So when they say I need a cosigner, they're saying go out there and find some idiot. <laughs> who don't know no better to agree to make this payment when you don't make it. Yep. Did y'all know that? Yes. That's what they're saying. Will you agree to make this payment when I don't make it? I don't care who asks you to co-sign. The Bible says don't do it. Look at your neighbor, say, don't do it, don't do it. Look at another side, say, don't do it, Louie, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't co-sign. Some say, uh, what about your child? Definitely double don't do it. Let me let that sink in with y'all for just a moment or two. Take your time. Yeah. Y'all hear me? You understand what I'm saying? Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you today? Don't co-sign. Unless you got the money sitting in the bank. Amen. Then when they don't pay it, you already got the money, you're going to pay it. Ain't going to hurt you. Amen. Amen. But most of y'all ain't in that situation. Look at the lips. I definitely ain't in that situation. <laughs> So the Bible gives us a warning about agreeing to pay somebody else's debt uh, if they can't pay it. Now, uh, let me talk about school loans for a minute because that's what a lot of y'all's debt is in, is in this college education that, pe that uh, kids are graduating from school with these humongous debt. And you say, well, how can they make it? How can they make it through college if we don't take out loans? Maybe what they need to do is work their way through college. Yeah. 
my radar is going off again over on this side right here now. I know that's not a popular thought, but I tell you one thing, they would appreciate their education a lot more if they had to work their way through it. Do you know how many parents have come to me because they're paying their child's way through college and they don't halfway go to class, they don't do their, they don't go to, they don't do their work, they, they just mess up and hear the parents and put out all this money for them to go to school and do it and, and the child ain't really appreciating it. But if they have to work their way through it, they will have a different appreciation for what they're doing. And it's tragic to me that they're graduating from colleges with all of this debt and still can't get a job. And they still got it. Let me let that sink in for a moment. All right, let me close with number three. Here's my third point. If you borrow money and don't pay it back, it's a sin. Borrowing and not paying back is a sin. Psalm 37 verse 21 says, the, the wicked borrows and does not repay. When you file bankruptcy, yes, you're not paying back. Ooh. Ooh, Lord. Thank all five of y'all for that rousing affirmation. But that's a fact. You're saying to somebody, I can't pay back the money that I borrowed. So what am I saying? I'm telling you several things. Stop using credit cards. Don't borrow money from other people. Don't loan people money. The Bible's concept about uh, loaning is charitable. It means you give with no hopes of getting it back. So when you, 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 you loan somebody some money, I loan Chris some money, He's supposed to pay me back on Friday. Here come Friday. I ain't heard from Chris, I ain't seen Chris. I call Chris. He see my name pop up on his phone. He ain't answer. I call him two or three times in a row, he don't answer. What you gotta do is block your number or call from another number. <laughs> Chris gonna answer. Hello? Hey man, how come you ain't answering my calls? Because he owes me this money today. You don't loan money. If you don't have it to give with no hopes of giving it back. That's right. Hold on, let me say this. So many relationships have been broken and bruised by loaning people money. And I'm saying to you today, I think I've said this already. You don't loan people money that you need back. You can't afford to give it to them, don't do it. Value the relationship better to say that I don't want to mess up our relationship. I'm also telling you, if you have borrowed money from people, pay them back. Go ahead, clap on that. <laughs> And if you have need, rather than using a credit, going into debt with it, pray and give God an opportunity to bring it to pass. Amen. I'm done. I'm finished. I am proud that our church, through your support and giving, was able to build the Family Life Center debt-free. believe in God for us to be able to build a children's building debt free. Let me close with this. A lot of y'all are in debt. 
You owe people money all over the place. I want to tell you, number one, pay people back. I want to tell you, get out of debt as soon as you can and never go back in. Other than my homes, I have no debt. Glory. I felt the quickening of the Holy Ghost right there. And I'm trying to get, I'm trying to bring the same drip drip on your life. I don't owe for no cars. I don't owe for no education for nothing. I don't owe for no credit cards. I don't have no debt other than the homes that I, that I own. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Oh, glory. <laughs> I'm trying to make a drip, drip come down on you. Yes. Some of y'all are in debt, not just financially. Some of you are in debt spiritually. You have a debt. Matter of fact, we've all had a debt that we needed to pay to God because our sin is great. But thanks be to God, somebody stepped to the plate named Jesus and say, I got that. I'll cover it with my blood. I'll wash away those sins. I'll forgive. And that's in fact what Jesus did. He paid a debt that we could not pay. Yes. And some of you here today, they don't have a relationship with that Lord, that's that Jesus. Right. Yes. And my assignment today is to tell you that he loves you enough that he wants to forgive you of whatever you've done in your past. Whatever your life has been, he wants to forgive you. And he wants to draw you to himself. If that's you, get on up and come on down here right now and say, you know what? I need to meet that Jesus. I want my debt of my sin forgiven. And I want to have a walk and a relationship with him. Don't be ashamed. Make your way down here now. While the blood is running warm in your veins, while you have the activities of your limbs, come on and say yes to the Lord. Yes to Jesus. Say yes to him. Yield to him. Say yes to Jesus. Yes to him. Yes to him. This is, this is also an appeal for people who are backslidden, who need to rededicate your life to the Lord. You started with him, but you drifted back. Come. You're not sure. You need assurance? Come right now. You see, you have questions and doubts, and you want assurance we can help you. Or if you're already saved, walking with God, but you want to join this church, this here is a great church for you to be a part of. Let me invite you to come. 
You need a church home. Come on, right now. We're going to sing that through one more time. Go ahead, uh, Brother Chuki. Sing that again. Right now. 